This is Making Light. Julie Hurt and Kate Fogger are soul level intuitives and animal communicators. This show is about us sharing our experiences in the hope it will help others along their path. So let's go make some light. Hello everybody, I'm Kate Fogger, this is Julie Hurt and together we are Making Light and we've been making lots of light today, um, chatting about stuff. So um in deference to our new readers, new readers start here. Uh, we're just going to do a little introduction of what we do. So every month, Julie and I have been coming up with different themes. Um, these themes, we call them workarounds. In our Soul Level Intuitive coach Coaching, we talk about workarounds, which are behaviours that we do to alleviate the pain, if you like, of um, negative beliefs. So we have we recognize four negative beliefs in soul level coaching, not lovable, not worthy, not good enough and not safe, supported or protected. And most negative beliefs that you have will fall somewhere into those four categories. They do pretty much cover everything, albeit some will have some overlap. And the themes that we've been looking at while workarounds are the behaviors that we do. So if you're feeling, for example, if you feel not worthy, and you find yourself in some repeated behavior, that would be what we would call a workaround. And in soul level coaching, what we do is we identify the workaround, we get our clients to, to start looking at these things more objectively after that, and then we identify the negative belief behind the workaround. And once you have that visibility and that awareness, it starts to fall away because it gets to a point where you can see how it covers or colors your whole life um, and hopefully you get to a point where you go, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. So there's no forcing going on. There's no changing of behavior. It's more more and all about awareness. I think that covers an introduction, Julie, but we'll go. Julie, you can add to this um, when we start. But this month of November we're looking at people pleasing, personal favorite of mine. There's a lot of them. I know I say that a lot, but this is actually personal favorite workaround and absolute favorite um, negative belief. So yes. we are looking at not lovable, the negative belief being not feeling lovable or feeling unlovable or feeling not lovable or basically just feeling shit and unloved, basically. That's really the workaround we're looking at, the negative belief we're looking at. Workaround overused, um, very much discussed on social media and all sorts of things. And you'll hear a lot about people pleasing these days. I uh, don't really think we need to explain what it is. Um, but it will come out anyway, and I've got to stop saying M. I've just realised I've started saying N. Has to stop. Oh. So, Julie, as usual, we were because we were chatting beforehand. I had all these bright ideas that I've been chatting over and, and exploring with Julie and all that, which meant that I was completely focused on that and completely unprepared for this. But given it is my favourite stroke, favourite stroke, favourite of everything, I imagine I'll be able to come up with something. However, Julie, as always, better prepared, closer, has had already had a chat with the guys and come up with a few things. Uh, so take it away, Julie. All right. So, whew, so that's a that's awesome, Kate. So, um, when <laughs> I was working with my guides and asking about people pleasing, which I have absolutely done, continue to do, but looking at it, not but and looking at it through the lens of not lovable. For me, there were two things actually. Now that they've shown me. Um, one was what I used to do back in the day. And then even an example from yesterday about how some of this awareness you talked about when you're aware of what's going on, things fall away. And so when you said that they showed me something that happened yesterday, which was me being, having been aware of this, not lovable in the terms of people pleasing and letting it fall away. So I'm going to go back to the back in the day. When I was working, um, it, I used to work in advertising, communications and advertising, and I would work both on the agency side of the business, so ad agencies, but I'd also work every now and then on the corporate side. I would kind of flop back and forth. And so there was a time period when I was working, this was really in my um, mid-30s through my very early 40s, straddled that, that milestone of 40s there. And I was um, 
working for this manufacturer, big manufacturer, global company, actually managed their brand globally for a while, loved it. Um, and there was um, someone new was introduced to the team. And this particular person, huge ego, huge ego, and very much about them and very much about um, and every and what was so interesting to me when I look back at it even then too, and, and even just still feeling like in the moment, when this person arrived on the scene, the entire leadership of the company kind of glommed on to this person and was like, he's the savior, he's going to change the direction, he's going to rein, reinvigorate the brand, he's going to do all this stuff. And many of us, including me, was like, um, he's kind of a shyster. Like, can you not see that it's really all about that person himself and not about the greater and higher good. Now, also, yes, and I too was trapped in my own not feeling lovable. Like I felt like I had put all this time and energy. I had built all these relationships all around the world. I had done all this work and moved things forward. And then somebody comes in with one fell swoop and bam, right? Everything in my humble opinion, everything was like moving that way. And it's, I'm just you're going, but what about me? What about me? What about me? So I began, so that's my ego, right? And that's my stuff that was coming up to light as well, which is why, as you think about it in terms of soul contracts, he was there so that I could see coming up. And oh, it also, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Still hard. Right. So Anyway, so, but I realized now, you know, when I was thinking with the, when the guides were showing me back then, because I didn't feel lovable, I didn't feel like I was loved in the situation. I didn't even feel like love was a thing that I could receive because I just wasn't getting any of that feedback in my, um, it was like, almost like it was blocked because everybody was turned to this person. I began to react in a people pleasing way, but in a different way than one would think. So instead of like kowtowing and going, oh, lovely person, lovely person, I actually reacted in such a strong 180 degree ways in that um, it was more like reactionary. So like if that person did something, I'd be like, well, I don't need to do that. And I would actually turn against him or if he did something, there was something else that he did. And I'm like, I'm going to make sure everybody knows about it. And I became this little gossip in an effort. So I use people pleasing in a not so nice way, like people pleasing. I always think of it as submissive dog, kowtowing, you know, whatever you want. I actually use people pleasing from my not lovable negative belief as a way to overreact instead of hearing what was requested of me. I, re I responded in a way to hopefully answer the question, but make someone else the fault, the, the bad guy. So I just, I continually reacted, actually overreacted instead of being present in what I needed to do for me or what needed to be done in the situation. I actually tried to make it, set it up so that other people would trip because I felt like I was a victim. Explain that to me. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm a little lost. So he does, he explains the situation where that's people pleasing. It's kind of, it's more um, trying to overcompensate. It's using, oh, I'm going to say it this way. They're having me back up. It's using, or I'm going to say it this way. <laughs> Instead of the pin being dropped on um, me, just being in the situation and whatever was required in the situation, I put the pin on him and I let that trying to either sometimes get in his good graces so he would pull me along and maybe shut up or sometimes trying to get other people to see what was going on, truly going on over here. I put the pin on that. So I took the, the focus off of me and I put it over here. And trying to get either people to see me in his light or people to see him in that light. It, and therefore I would get out of whatever was needed in the situation and try to people please by using him as the magnet instead of, instead of just focusing on me. It seems complicated, but there's an overreaction aspect of it. I know, I'm sorry. 
I'm really sorry. I'm really. <laughs> explain the people pleasing bit. So I'm actually going to explain the not lovable bit. Okay. Really. Okay. So because I didn't feel loved, I wasn't getting love mm -hmm. from anybody and anything that was going on to me, I felt like all the love was going over there. And I, there was probably, je I'm guessing jealousy. I'm just trying to, I'm like asking the guys, like there's a jealousy aspect. There's so big of an ego aspect. Like everything's going over that way. I don't feel love. Looked at all the things that I did. Look at all the things that I did. And instead of it being on just being confident in who I am, am and allowing Julie to do the work that Julie needed to do I moved the pin over to him so I, I became a victim I allowed myself to be a victim every time he did something whatever it was it could be the slightest thing anything I reacted to it with such force so I allowed my energy to go that way in an effort to get other people to see, oh, look, she's actually really good. She actually does know what she's doing. She just is deserving of love. I actually felt like if I moved the meat, if I moved their, um, how do I want to say this? If I moved their attention to what all he was doing wrong and to let their focus be over there instead of just being in my own thing, so showing people pleasing kind of in a reactionary backdoor kind of way, that's how for me, unlovable worked with people pleasing. If I can show that someone isn't, isn't um, lovable, then they could love me. Does it, so it's very much outside, I know, sorry. It's a bit convoluted, so I know. Just because it's not the strongest one for me, but that's, yeah. Oh, Does it's not sense? the strongest one for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I have well, I mean, it's there, but it's, there's a more, I laugh because not worthy is my biggest one. Right. My big is negative belief. Yeah. Right now, right now. Well, I, um, I would say that I had no idea I was a people pleaser until mm -hmm. about 10 years ago. Like I didn't know what it meant because I always thought I was really feisty, arsy, all the things that, and I would think of people pleasing as being really obsequious and, you know, people that overtly try to please other people, which I never have. But I realize now that all of my life, I have been quietly trying to keep people happy, which is people pleasing um to be loved I suppose but it's so deep in my psyche that I was completely unaware of it I mean the situation you're talking about were you aware of it at the time no no although there was one thing that I did I'm very not I'm not proud of this at all there was one thing that I did that as I was doing it while it felt righteous to do nice feeling righteous we like righteous yes so while it felt righteous to do it to some degree in the moment as I always every time I look back at it I <laughs> I am so you can see my kidney I chop I cough I cough right I'm burning the throat chakra candle for you oh thank you thank you I need that yeah as I look back at it now I can feel um shame absolutely feel shame and I was even trying to see if I could go one step further and forgive myself and I can it's hard um but I feel shame because I can see that it was totally my ego and my not feeling loved in that moment and oh, trying I know, but he's also a bit of an ass from what you said <laughs> you have to take all the responsibility for it no no and I'm not taking responsibility for he what he did I'm just taking responsibility for what um. I did and my reaction, right? Because if I don't take responsibility for my reaction or become aware of it, then I can't grow and move on. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. So that's why he was here. So as much as like when I said, oh, I can see the soul contract now, I'm like, Ugh. you know, I, mean, I, I was trying it. to trying to think of a similar situation at work. I'm not sure I can tie it to unlovable, but what I can see is actually much more mundane than that, Julie. And that is just little things in life all the way along as I um, learned as I 
started on this spiritual path and understanding about selfishness and being a good thing and you know doing what I trying to do what I wanted to do which is a real slog for me and and as a lot of especially women were fine you know you start giving the advice well do what you want and they're like well I don't, I don't know what I'm, I've never had the opportunity and it's so for all you women out there if you feel like that this is not unusual I did a really good course with um I can't remember her name didn't really do the course for very long but what I did learn was it's perfectly normal to not know what you want when all your life you have been doing what everyone else wanted you to do and then someone goes well what do you want and you're like I have no idea it's not an unusual reaction because until you start opening up the possibilities of what you could do how the fuck would you know what you wanted to do when your whole life you've been a slave to to what everyone else wanted to do and we're um, numb to it. We're absolutely numb totally, to it. Totally. Yeah. And it's a, it's a slow journey. I'm still learning it now. But one of the earlier ones was, and this is such a silly, trivial thing. And this is this is the great thing about soul level coaching is when you can, when you're working with your workarounds and we get our clients to sort of observe their workarounds and become aware of them. And when you get to some of the really silly situations where your workaround applies that's really when the when the magic happens because you're like oh my god I can't believe I did this <laughs> so here was my little thing was um Gary uh is a you know I you know I fucking I don't and you're gonna hate me for this but I don't really understand Gary's your Star- husband for Gary's new readers husband. Gary's your husband but I know that you're a Star Wars fan are you you seem to talk about you talked about a Star Wars thing earlier. Anyway, I yeah, I like Star Wars and Star Trek, but not like the newer Star Wars stuff because that I oh think no, of course not. No, of course not. Yeah, like yeah, um, I just don't I have, have no idea what you're talking about. That's yes, yeah, so you sound just like Gary, which is what I thought was going to happen. Um, anyway, he wanted to go and see the new Star Wars movie, and I can't remember the which one it was, and I was just like, "Can't you go with your dad?" And he was horrified because I realized I had never said but he's like but you like Star Wars and I'm thinking why would you think that because I had never in my life said I would rather not actually I couldn't give a fuck about Star Wars I'd much rather go see something else is that a possibility no because it's never a possibility I have never watched a program on television with Gary which is something I wanted to see and he's not interested in that has never happened to this day it has never happened I sneak upstairs and watch RuPaul when he's doing something else I you know he comes into the room and makes a comment about screaming weirdos or whatever, and I switch it off, <laughs> you know, which I'm not complaining about because I don't want to watch it with him anyway. Nobody wants to watch a program so I'm there uh, carping in the background about how ridiculous it is. But I won't even, I don't think I've ever seen a chick flip, maybe seen one, and it was probably shit, and Gary goes, well, see, that's what happens. You don't really like, you don't like chick flips. You think you do. And there is an element of truth in that is that I sort of react every now and then and go, oh, no, I want to watch something different, and then it'd be rubbish. Um, yeah, I had never I had never voiced... I've always wanted to be a good sport. That's really essentially it. I want to be a good sport. Why? Why do I want to be a good sport? So people will love me. How fucking pathetic is that? Like, there's nothing wrong with being a good sport. But when you realise you've sacrificed all those hours of done things that I'm really not that fussed about because I no. wanted to be a good sport. Now, if Gary genuinely had nobody else in the world to go to the cinema and he desperately wanted, of course I'd go with him. But he could have come with his dad. He could have come with his nephew. He could That would have required effort on his part. But it was the fact that he said, but you like Star Wars. And I'm like, oh, my God, all my life I've just gone along with shit. And the minute yeah. I, and it's a problem, isn't it? You'll know this, Julie. The minute you start to go, well, I'm not sure, actually. I'm not really, you know, <laughs> rather spend the time watching RuPaul. You know, people get upset because you've never, you've never stood up to them before. And I'm not standing, it's not, it's not a big issue. Yeah. That's how deep I work. So there's a very small example of my work around. Why? Because if I'm a good sport, you'll love me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I ever thought that consciously because I sort of assumed Gary loves me anyway. But I can certainly look look back to the a boyfriend I had before I met Gary, where I had come out of a marriage. Um, looking back now, he was a fucking psychopath. No, but I didn't know at the time. I had Asperger's. I suspect now, knowing what I know about personality disorder, I would suspect he was borderline personality disorder. Can't be sure. Um, but 
I was so probably insecure from leaving marriage and and not really, you know, blah, all of that. Um, I desperately want he be in retrospect and looking back because he was Asperger's or personality disorder. He wasn't giving me warm, fuzzy feelings about a new relationship. And normally in a new relationship, you get a lot of warm, fuzzy feelings. He wasn't. So I would be playing it cool and I'd play it even cooler and I'd play it even cooler. And I was just a damn good sport. You know, I would, mm. you know, I was very laid back about everything and I made it a priority to be a good sport because I didn't want to be needy because I wasn't getting any lovely feeling things from him. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't. Oh. Anyway, so that, there we go. Well, that's my yeah. offering. It's so, just pathetic actually looking back, um, but I forgive myself for it, but it is pathetic yeah. that you get to the age of 50 and realize that you're a people pleaser and you didn't even know it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and when I, you know, as I think about the complicated <laughs> example I had, what's interesting what the guys were just saying to me was, so we're in eclipse season right now. We just had a solar eclipse. We're going to have a lunar eclipse here on Saturday. Okay. Um, and we just entered Scorpio season as well. So there's some shadow stuff that's coming up. So like the example that I was sharing was really to some degree the shadow aspect of people pleasing because it was like a backward way to get people and I'm like all the people that I wanted to love are like in front of me to get these people to love me I had to undermine him so I allowed my focus to move from me just be me and do whatever I need to do and and not and at that point I would probably have to not worry about being lovable but I wasn't ready to let that go so in an effort to like see look at me look at me and pull that spotlight on me I had to undermine him so my reactions would get, I would overcompensate in an effort because my objective was really to undermine him. So my my reactions would be not in line with who I am. And it would be overreacting to me. I Something would happen. Someone would mention that person's name and I'd be like, what? like totally over, you know, not necessary instead of taking a moment and realizing what they were actually probably saying was probably not as in a line with what I was believing at the time. So I just, well, we, yeah, that happens to all of us. When you get in that mindset, you can't see anything else. No. Um, and that's the thing about law of attraction. Sometimes it's so obvious, you know, I talk so much, there's so much about law of attraction. It actually is sort of common knowledge, but you know, it's only when you actually put the filter of law of attraction, you're going to see that's what happens. When you are in that mindset that somebody is an asshole or whatever, there is nothing they can do, say, whatever. I mean, apart from those, I don't know, moments of the divine where it comes and you suddenly go, oh, thank you. You know, but that's, uh, yeah, that happens in movies. It does occasionally happen, doesn't it? I mean, I've been in full, full on hate in someone mode and then they'll do something and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and you just deflate and you really, but typically when you're in the throes of that you know you can't it's it's strange isn't it because when you're hating someone you they, you will never see anything to love about them right right yeah. so locked down and uh yeah universe uh, will continue to serve you evidence of what you think um, yes so people pleasing us oh god you see there's probably there must be a million examples of people pleasing i actually scratched my head which i realized is a, not, not a stress response because <laughs> my whole life is about that i suppose i, I think about all the shit i part with from my mom all the stuff i used to do for her and again never consciously never mm. consciously tried to please people i'm not that type of person i'm really not that type of person i don't like um i avert um gestures of loyalty and that you know we're British anyway so we don't do it in the same way but you know I'm just not that type of person at all I don't you know I've always been quite bolshy in that sense in my conscious mind of I'm over here and if you want me you come and get me you know I don't have to fucking do all that but insidiously looking at the behaviors underneath all that maybe it was just because it was mostly my mom and, and family and people close to me I don't know I think of all the things that um, my, I was looking after my mom's house. They went off to Kenya and then to Turkey, her and my dad. 
and I was looking after their um, house in Scotland and um, so they had someone else doing the renting of it but whenever there was something legal coming up I was why 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 was I doing that for her she wasn't incapable do you know what I mean it's like she just sort of siphoned all this responsibility onto me from the age of I don't know whatever zero but basically I was like running her empire I was in a full-time job I don't understand and like it and that's just it it was so deeply ingrained in me that that this was my job was to to keep everybody happy I think that's people pleasing isn't it absolutely yeah yeah cool I, I realized yesterday that a people pleasing um workaround or people pleasing as a workaround released itself and there's many ways that a workaround of people pleasing can appear with a negative belief and then you've got you know then you think four negative beliefs and you still have this workaround and it takes it's like oh look at all the stuff anyway yesterday we had um somebody I had somebody come over to inspect the work that was done last year so last year I had mice in my house I and know. I did all this research because all the pest, all the pest companies, pest companies, they, that I could find. So if you're an ethical pest company, I would like to talk with you. However, <laughs> because all the ones that I could find in my area just want to put traps down, poison down. They don't want to necessarily look at where the entry and exit points are for the said, you know, quote unquote, air quotes for those of you on the podcast pest they don't want to find that they just want to kill them well that doesn't solve the problem that there's something coming into my house that i would want not to do which nice there's all that that's happened as well all that so i did this additional research and after talking to the mice as well and i found out that where we thought the mice were actually coming in we could encapsulate the crawl space so it's a whole thing it's a system they install it wonderful so we're in that same part of the year again where stuff is going to start to enter my home in an effort to live, continue to live. And so I'm making sure I'm watching to see if I can find evidence, all this stuff. Well, um, don't you know, I didn't realize that when I did the capsule encapsulation that it came with a five-year um, maintenance service agreement for free. So every year, I didn't know this, they come out and inspect it. So that was yesterday. So they came out and inspected. They can find no evidence of mice or anything else. However, they want to sell me a lot of other stuff. Totally fine. In their right. I get it. Cool. So they came and inspected it. Everything looks great. They found a lot of different other things that they could help us with. And I'm like, that's wonderful. Why don't you tell me more? And I'm asking questions. Now, old Julie would not have asked the questions. Old Julie would have been like, oh, okay, okay, here's my people pleasing. Okay, oh, I see. Oh, I'm not, in order for you to love me, I'm gonna agree. I'm not gonna ask any questions. I'm not gonna push back. I'm just gonna, okay, yes. Oh, you wanna charge me another several th several thousand dollars to be able to, oh, I guess I need to find the money. Like this would be what, not yesterday. And I couldn't figure out what was going on in the moment. And after he left, I was like, oh, look at me. Look what I did. <laughs> Because the whole time he's talking to me, lovely gentleman, I never once like felt poorly about him or towards him. I was like, we're going to have a conversation. So if you're saying I need to do X, Y, and Z, are those things that we cannot do ourselves? Oh, absolutely. He said, wonderful. And I said, but would you still provide a quote? He said, yes. And then I went over the quote and I like asked all these so that I could share it with Brad, my husband, for those of you who are new here and say, here's all this stuff that I learned today. What do we think feels good for us? And so this guy's going to call me later today and I'm going to share something like just, hey, this, this none, most of this doesn't feel good. Maybe this, but we need more detail on what it is you're going to do. I would never have done that before all this work that we've done. Never, because I would have been so worried about making him happy so that I could be loved. And now in order for me, I feel I love myself and I really like the fact that I'm building my savings account again. I don't really want to part with it. So let's have a conversation on what's best for the house. <laughs> this is that's really interesting because as you were talking, I thought um that when you said you you let him talk, 
to you and I was thinking well actually did you even want to hear what he had to say because that's an aspect of people pleasing isn't it where you just like listening to someone instead of going let me stop you there I couldn't give a fuck shut up but actually you are interested so so congratulations Julie yeah there was also and again this is not what you did but just another example for our readers and that is and before anyone writes in yes readers not viewers and listeners listeners so frank's gonna just thing. decided Look to him up. Word readers. yeah <laughs> i just i just like that i like that they're readers and i like being part of frank skinner's crew he's a comedian british community he always talks about readers readers and writers um okay so when you said i've got a quote for brad so that you can say look at all this information i've got oh is that a little bit of people pleasing there look at me look what i did all day i've been busy i don't think that is the case but that's another example of um I don't know if that's people pleasing that's probably more about worthiness rather than lovingness see there's a subtle difference isn't it because if you were trying to go look how busy I've been all day that's actually more about your worthiness rather than your lovableness but yeah I'm so the same with with um with workmen especially again it's all about for me it's like being a good sport I think I'm a really good I want to say employer because that's not it I don't know what you'd call it someone who has construction you know workers come plumbers electricians I will always make you tea I will always give you biscuits um I won't argue with a quote unless there's you know like I that's not that's a newer thing I would have done in the past actually but uh, I've sort of gone you know I think people who do a good job deserve to get paid a, a decent amount of money I mean I'll stop I'm still penny pinching but there are I'll not argue with something that's unreasonable I just actually won't give them the job <laughs> so, but um I don't know it's it's you know there's there was a few instances when I was building a shed but I was just a complete idiot like it, it but it was sort of like if you love me like if I do nice things to you then you won't you won't hurt me that's basically what it is I'm not sure that that's unlovable there's an element of unlovable or maybe that's not safe supported and protected because my I, my um, very warped thinking which isn't that warped logically holds whether it actually holds in the real life I think if I am nice to you and fair with you then you're going to do a good job for me and you're not going to shit on me um so that's a sort of overlap there between lovable and being safe because for me being lovable is actually about being safe as well which again is where it all oh it's too complicated but yeah workman is a real thing for me yeah 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 I mean I yes I just even think about this yeah just yesterday all the things absolutely I could have fallen into additional I'll call them traps they're designed with love but it's you know just as lessons to learn I could have fallen into other traps but I actually enjoyed having a conversation about this guy about with this gentleman about what we could do on our house my home where I live where I spend pretty much 24 <laughs> 7 except for taking Lucas for because I work from home right so learning about that it also now that I think about it I also felt empowered because mm -hmm. the more I learned and asked questions about well what do, why would I absolutely have to have that jack put there or why do I have to have this air circulation and to me I'm thinking well I can do that I can just put a fan down there like there's so many other things but to have the fuller view and to feel to love myself in that moment and not need to worry about making him happy yeah. and therefore getting love so, from him and getting what you need from the conversation instead of just going yeah. along with it yeah 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 I felt I still feel like actually Brad was a little grumpy last night when I gave him all this information because his workarounds kicked in it was fascinating to watch but it ticked me off too just in full transparency and honesty but his workarounds kicked in about he's not doing enough for the house mm -hmm. and I was like no 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 all I'm saying is like look, we could do this. We could do this. We could do that. We could do all these things. If we, if we feel like we need to, we just, I look at, I just felt like, wow, I felt really good for me about, I now know. So like when this gentleman calls today, I'm like, no, I, you know, I don't think we're going to do these, but we could be interested in this. So can you tell me a little bit more? I just feel like, oh, in, in <laughs> you know, you know, home improvement show. Are you Julie? <laughs> no, no, no. I respect people who can do that kind of work with their hands that is not me so yes I'm like you I will absolutely pay people 
fair, fair, which is a key word right now, particularly in this country, yes. a fair wage for the work that they do, because everybody brings, as you know, as I say this, a piece of pie to the party, carpentry, plumbing, electrician, HVAC, all that stuff, not my pie, but hey, bring your pie on over here. And I'll I, pay. I used to do everything myself, everything like it partly started I, well, I would I would argue that it started out of necessity um, because I didn't have much money, but a lot of it, it actually becomes a mindset that you have to do everything yourself. Yeah. So I don't, I don't anymore, unless, you know, I, I still struggle with the money thing, but we can, you know, that will come up and <laughs> no doubt in various things, you know, I'm still, you know, because I, I feel the pinch of um, world events, shall we say. Um, making me in a poverty mindset which I'm trying very hard to avoid but there's mm. fear and I, there's a big conflict there actually going off topic slightly but there's a huge conflict for me there about paying people what they're worth and what the fuck you want how much you know so that you know because I don't like to penny pinch about that but you know <laughs> it's it's hard when you're not feeling flush to pay mm. people what what they're worth um, and and I'll end up probably doing it myself again a lot yeah. Of yeah totally well I think we're at a really good spot I, I do and I'm I can't believe how quickly that flew by Julie because yeah I know pretty amazing so we've been chatting for about an hour and a half before we started and I was like oh my god we're gonna get through this and then what many exciting things yeah <laughs> yeah cool so anyway so this it was today so now we're starting this whole new month of people pleasing and clearly, as shown today, it's shadow <laughs> of undermining, if you will, I will say, um, in an effort for people to love oneself. And we were looking at this all through the lens of um, the uh, negative belief of not feeling lovable. So uh, we are Kate Fago. Thank you. And myself, Julie Heard. We are making light to humans being. You can watch us every week. We have new episodes on Friday on YouTube. You can listen to us as a podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you like to get your podcasts delivered. Uh, you can rate, review, subscribe on all of these different platforms. You can also leave comments and let us know what you think. We would absolutely love to hear from you, particularly as it pertains around people-pleasing, and the negative belief of not lovable. We will see you next week when we tackle not worthy. Not worthy, another favorite. Not worthy and people-pleasing, <laughs> which for me, whew, I just got my heart just went boom, 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 boom. <laughs> That's a big one. Oh, I can, we, that'll be good. Anyway, so we will see you next week and please take really good care of yourself until then. Have a good one.